rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the clerk please call the roll? Rose. Here. Shields. Here. Simpson. Coyne. Here. Hare. Here. Hazeltine. Present. Lamb. Here. Reading of the minutes. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I move that the minutes of the regular meeting of February 28, 2022 as prepared and submitted by the clerk be approved. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? Will the clerk please call the roll on the approval of the minutes? Shields. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Um, reports of standing committees. The Finance Committee met prior to Council this evening and we'll meet again in two weeks. We have several items on the agenda. Health, um, uh, public properties, Mr. Shields. Thank you, Mr. President. No meeting scheduled, no report this evening. Special legislation, Mr. Lamb. Thank you, Mr. President. I have nothing to report, but I have scheduled a meeting um, to begin the discussion on, on um, deer within the city limits. And uh, I have scheduled it for April 19th. It's a Tuesday. Uh, meeting will begin at 5.30. And my expectation is that it will be a, um, an informative meeting. There will be a representative from the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. And um, I'm presuming it probably will be a rather lengthy meeting, maybe an hour, hour and a half or so. So I'm, I'm, I think we'll have a healthy discussion. We'll, we'll get some good information from the state and um, some direction of how to move forward with an issue that um, in some ways probably splits the community in a way. Uh, but an issue that we do need to have the discussion on and try to um, come to a, um, a, a positive uh, conclusion so that we can address the issue. Um, we, can, we can address the issue. Thank you. Thank you. Streets and sidewalks, Ms. Hare. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, no report, but I do want to announce that we do have our first uh, Streets and Sidewalks Committee meeting of the year. It is going to be this Wednesday, March 16th at 530 right here. So please attend. Thanks. Thank you, Water and Utilities, Mrs. Hazeltine. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, nothing new to report at this time, but we will be scheduling a meeting in April, so I will let you know as soon as that is finalized um, to discuss funding for the cable access program. Thank you, Emerging Technologies, Mr. Rose. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I have uh, no meeting scheduled for the Technology Committee, but the kickoff meeting for the Emerging, Emerging Technologies Advisory Committee uh, will be held on uh, March 24th at 6.30 right here in the Rotunda. Thank you. Thank you. Request for council action. We have several for finance. We have 2250 expenditure of the ARPA funds for MNJ Technology for Community Development. 2251, expenditure for North Royalton Power Equipment for the Cemetery Department. 2252, 2022 material bids. 2253, amend ordinance 17421, West Smith Reconstruction Easement. 2254, accept easement West Smith re Reconstruction. 2255, Woodside Green Subdivision Phase 2 Dedication Plant. 2256, FAA Grant Application Narrative Report and ALP Update. 2257, general liability insurance renewal. 2258, budget amendments. 2260, expenditure over 15,000, Ohio Association of Chiefs of Police. 2261, zoning map amendment, 881 Lafayette Road, I-1 to C-3. 2262, AARP Community Challenge Grant 2022. And for the Special Legislation Committee, we have 2259, Preserving the Historic District. Reports of Municipal Officers. Mayor Hamill. Thank you, Mr. President. The uh, annual Fort Chaplain service was held Tuesday, March 8th at 7 p.m. I was honored to speak on faith in the Medina community along with uh, Pastor Arthur Ruffin from Second Baptist Church and retired Lieutenant Colonel C. Reed Miller, U.S. Air Force Chaplain. I'd like to thank Councilman at large, Paul Rose, for attending as well from the city. The program was sponsored by the American Legion Post 202 of Medina and held at the Medina Presbyterian Church. And also thanks to Reverend Dr. Henry Pierce, the pastor for hosting. 
the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, I know a couple of council members have, have asked me. Uh, the decision will be made shortly after April 1st to have the parade or just a service on the square like we did last year because of the COVID. I'm working with the local veterans organizations uh, there and our preference is to have the parade uh, unless we have another COVID outbreak that prohibits same. Uh, but a decision will be made early April. And then last but not least, uh, just prayers respectfully ask all to keep the Ukrainian people in your thoughts and prayers as they experience this conflict and violence, both relatives here and those who reside in Ukraine or recently fled from there. We're hopeful to bring this uh, attack and conflict to an end as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Durham, Director of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. Just my usual reminder that the city has an income tax and that you can file online or get forms online at rita-ohio.com. Rita and then there's a couple things on the agenda that I'll address when we get there. Thank you, Mr. Huber, Law Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant Markham, Police Department. Thank you, Mr. President. I have nothing to report. Thank you, Mrs. Marshall, Economic Development Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report this evening. Thank you, Mr. Piccoli, Service Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report this evening. Thank you, Mr. Gladys, Building Official. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you, uh, Ms. Come on, you can Lutuska. do it. No, no, you're, you always mess me up. You know. <laughs> I don't listen to you when I say this. Uh, Cindy. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I have nothing to report. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you guys always try to mess me up. Mr. Worley, Parks and uh, Recreation Director. Thank you, Mr. President. Just uh, one item to note. We are currently accepting applications for various positions at the Recreation Center. Um, as well as the Parks Department um, for seasonal employees, part-time laborers, front desk attendants, uh, facility monitors, marketing coordinator, activity coordinator, lifeguards, and summer camp counselors. Thank you. <laughs> Not much there. Uh, Chief Walters, Fire Department. Thank you, Mr. President. Just like to remind everybody with the changing of the time for daylight savings time to change your smoke detector batteries. Thank you. And finally, uh, Mr. Dutton, Planning and Community Development Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you. A confirmation of Mayor's appointment. We have none. Notices, communication, petitions, none. Unfinished business, none. Introduction of visitors. Uh, members of the public will be permitted the opportunity to speak on any issue or concern which pertains to the city during a portion of the council agenda devoted to introduction of visitors. Comments shall be directed to the chair in a reasonable time limit of approximately five minutes will be imposed. If there's a group, please appoint a spokesperson. Speakers should approach the rear microphone and state their name and address so it can be entered in the minutes. Members of the public will be afforded the opportunity to comment on other portions of the meeting as determined by the chair or by a vote of the majority of council members present. Is there anybody that wishes to address council at this time? Hi, my name is Carrie Kelly and I live at 520 North Broadway Street in Medina. I would like to think that each and every single one of you sitting in the seat you are in because you have a love and passion for Medina, that each of you wants what is best for our city. When you ran for your position and were elected, constituents had faith in you to do what's right on behalf of the city and the residents. <clears throat> I feel like we're often left down by some of the decisions that are made, and we must fight for what is truly right for the city. We moved to Medina four years ago, and we had our choice to live anywhere within Northeast Ohio. We chose Medina for many reasons that include the uniqueness, the community, and the historic charm it has. We even have relatives who have moved here from out of state for the same reasons that we moved here. In my life, I have lived in five states and 13 different towns. Of all the places I have lived, I have never experienced citizens that have had to literally fight to do what is right for the city and its future to preserve it. Let's take the Brick Street on South Broadway as an example where residents had to fight the city to make sure the integrity and the history of the city remained consistent. Fully utilizing your role you are currently in today for the city of Medina, do you proactively take a hard look around to see how you can take action to maintain our current infrastructure and implement ways to preserve it. 
Do you keep the bigger picture in mind of why residents and visitors come to the historic district and spend their hard-earned money or how to continuously attract small businesses that bring revenue to our city? If we didn't fight for the right thing to do and left it for you to decide, will this city have the same look and feel that will attract people to keep coming to Medina in 10 or more years time? New buildings are everywhere and in every town across America. Do we want to look like all of the other suburban towns with new buildings or do we want to keep and preserve the intricate fabric of what makes Medina, Medina? Sure, those new buildings have a similar style to older buildings, but honestly, you aren't fooling anyone. These new buildings fray the fabric of Medina's history. Do you recognize how fortunate we are to be unique and not look like everywhere else? Why should we have faith and confidence in you when these things from a resident like me appear to be easy decisions, but yet we have to fight for what are, what's consciously right. Yet, here we are again to fight for what is right th the right thing to do when we shouldn't have to do this because this is your job and what you signed up to do and what you were elected to do. I want to hear what you are actively doing to preserve this city's charm, not only in the historic district, but also in your respective wards. To ensure the buildings, whether commercial or residential, don't go into despair, and how you are encouraging others to maintain what they have. Because if we don't do anything, there will be nothing, and we will just have a typical suburb that will look like all of the other towns across America. Although this is a city council meeting, my opinions and questions are directed to any and all individuals that have the ability to influence or make make final decisions in regard to the city of Medina. So what's your legacy going to be in, for this city? Are we going to let it slip away, or are we going to try and win the best hometown in Ohio again and again? Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to address council at this time? Hello, good evening. My name is Kelly Parks, and I'm the owner of Fur Medina Center for Dance Art, right here behind us. Um, I currently lease the property at 129 North Court Street. The dance studio started its journey in Medina in 2002 at 311 South Court Street, just across from Farmers Exchange. And then as we grew, we moved to 600 West Liberty. And in 2011, um, we joined the nine block historic district I am honored to be part of the heartbeat of our city. Whether here in the hub, the nine block hub, or a block or two out on the spokes, we have something truly special for our business owners and our residents here um, in our historic district. In 2008, I joined M Main Street Medina as a business member, and I am currently in my second term as a member of the Main Street Medina Board of Directors. The hard work of groups like Main Street Medina, the Historic Preservation Board, Community Design Committee, and legislative bodies like yourself is seen every day when visitors show up to spend their time and their money here in our little portion of a Hallmark movie. Our town is truly unique. In my time in the district, I have witnessed the growth, the restoration, and the development of significant properties. And I have um, unfortunately witnessed the neglect, the deterioration, and the eventual demoli demolition of key pieces of our history. In the historic district, what we have labeled here, our nine block district, district around the gazebo, I believe that the work we do sets a precedent for the rest of our community. And, um, other property owners and business owners value the decisions we make here and they, lead, they follow the example that we lead by. Um, if we protect our history here, then that extends out in our community. 
Years ago, as a community, we collectively decided that the history of our town was important and worthy. To that end, Main Street Medina has written a significant portion of its current strategic plan around the preservation and restoration and growth of what we are now calling South Town, an extension of our district. We are actively seeking funding to contribute to the overall planning that will help the property owners in that footprint to experience similar successes to those that we have here in the district. Sorry, I had to do it in big print so I could see it. And it's gonna stick, there we go. In 2021, the Main Street Medina Year in Review, you heard about the $31,000 in public grants and an additional $53,000 in private investment in district businesses that was received for facade renovations, signage, and building repairs. This is a drop in the bucket of money that has been invested and or awarded to our community because of our historic nature. Years before my time, we as a city divided, decided to fight for our historic legacy. And because of that, we reap the blessings and benefits of redevelopment outside this district. For example, Farmers Exchange, Foundry Social, the McDowell House, and more than I have time to talk about today. All these properties are a heartbeat outside of this district, but those owners were inspired by the foundation that is laid here in this nine block district. My fear is every day we take a piece of our precious and supposed to be protected district for granted and we devalue our ability to lead by example. Protecting the quality of the properties that house our neighborhoods and our businesses is important. Let me say that again. Protecting the quality of the properties that house our neighborhoods and our businesses is important. We've created the um, legislation to protect our legacy, but we don't back up that legis le legislation with action. We allow continued neglect and deterioration of what we profess to care about and value. If we continue to allow neglect and inevitable demol demolition of key components of our historic district, how do we expect to lead, challenge, and hold accountable those who come in narrowly minded on the quick and fast and dirty route of capitalism? And how do we expect the state and federal government to continue to give us grants in growing this community, and how do we expect private investment to value our district if we don't value it? We are on a very slippery slope. Look at this nine block district that City Hall is on. In the 10 years plus almost 11 years that I have been on the dance studio on Court Street, I have um, seen the demolition of three key properties and there are two more in our sites. From the dance studio on Court Street, around the corner to Sully's is all that will be left of historic property on this block. Everything else has been replaced or demolished. We'll have one of our key nine blocks with less than half of its properties with historic value. Everything, um, As I stand here and I think about all the things going on, some of it is too late to change, but at some point in time, we have to make the decision to stop allowing property owners and particularly um, absentee business property owners to neglect properties to a place where the only choice left financially is to demolish them. We have what we need for you to hold them accountable. So my business isn't running around houses that bricks are falling off. My customers with their five-year-olds in pink tutus aren't walking through muddy slot pits that look like a tractor pull has been through them. So that 
Um, we're not driving through um, uh, past a house that's had a, a, a porch torn off for almost four years now. It's too long for us to turn a blind eye to the treasure we have. I ask you to please protect our district from neglect. You have the power to do that. Please use it appropriately. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to address council? Yes. Skip Barron, 536 North Broadway Street. Uh, I'm speaking for my wife and I. Uh, some of you, I was looking around the room and since we've lived here, uh, except for the new people that have come on board to the city, I think there's 15 of the 20 or so of you that I know and I've worked with over the short time that we've lived here. And uh, I've always been proud to work with you folks. Um, Preserving the past, forging the future. It's right up there on the, on the screen, and it's, it was one of the things that my wife and I were most proud to become members of the community because that was their, I guess that's your motto, and the fact that it was more than just given lip service, but that was really what they stood for. At this point, I'm a little, dis actually I'm very disappointed in where we are right now. Um, I'm going to just read a little thing that my wife put together. Some of you have already heard this, and this will probably be the last time it's read because the people that need to hear it uh, are all here. That's from my wife and myself, Jan my wife Janet. We bought a house in Medina seven years ago. We were told that our house was built in 1910, but looking at the hand-hewn beams holding up the first floor, we knew the house was much older than that. We got lucky at the County Historical Society because a family who owned a home in the late 70s had gone to them for research. To our surprise, our home was built in 1834 by one of Medina's founders, Lathrop Seymour. It originally sat on the square where the new courthouse sits. I guess we're going to have a new, new courthouse from what I read. Uh, subsequent research at the Medina Library uncovered just how special our house and its original owner were. Lathrop Seymour was the first director of the city of Medina. It was Seymour who accepted the transfer of land in 1817 or 18, depending on what you read, from Elijah Boardman in order to establish the seat of justice here in Medina. He was also the first elected county sheriff and the only guy to be injured in the great Hankley hunt. Yet, he and his house seemed to have been forgotten. The more we dug into our house in Lathrop Seymour, the more excited we became. A visit to the Granger Historic Society proved that our house had belonged to the Sargent family for almost 90 years after Seymour died. It also became the Long Acres funeral home, and they added a second story on the south wing of the house. We bring these things up because our house came hours away from being demolished in 1937. The Eagles wanted to build a new airy and our house was in the way. But at the last minute, a local contractor, Robert Crowfoot, bought the house to save it. According to one of the history books, the two-story addition on the south side was moved to a house on Liberty Street, so nothing was wasted. Our house was moved five blocks north on Broadway and where it sits today. Everyone seemed to have forgotten about the house and the significance to Medina. So every time a historical home is demolished, the city loses more of its history and soul. Please do not let another city home be de demolished. And one last thing, as I was going through the uh, brochures on the back wall there that anybody that can come into this building and find and read and find out about their responsibilities for their um, homes or businesses that they have uh, well purchased. This one is Tenant Landlord Facts from uh, section 5321.04A of the Ohio Revised Code. 
And I'm just gonna read a couple of them and I'll finish. Number one, the landlord must comply with the requirements of any building, housing, health, or safety codes which materially affect health and safety. Number two, the landlord must make all repairs and do whatever is reasonably necessary to put and keep the premises in a fit and habitable condition. Number five, we'll skip a couple. Supply, the landlord shall or must supply running water, a reasonable amount of hot water, reasonable heat at all times. And number eight, keep all elect of nine, keep all electrical, plumbing, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning fixtures and appliances in good and safe working condition. Gee, where, where does that sound familiar? So I'll, I'll finish with this motto, Medina, let's continue to preserve the past and also forge the future. Thank you. Thank you. Is and there anybody I else? Uh, I always hated to follow Bill Lamb when he spoke because he was so darn good. But now I got to worry about following Terry Kelly and Kelly Parks because uh, they're so darn good as well. <laughs> oh, and I'm sure this guy's going to be pretty good. <laughs> Would you no. Hi, uh, Brian Farron, 3335 Myers Road, Medina. I won't repeat all that's been said. I think you know the, the passion the city feels uh, for our historic structures. From a teenager days, watching the square being renovated, to all the years in service clubs, starting with Key Club, JCs, Rotary, and my fellow service clubs, all doing projects around this town to make it what it is today. My concern is if we loosen the grip on what you already have in place to help preserve structures through the uh, the proper channels. I look at it as an extension, as the county seat of government. Medina should be leading the way in helping the villages and townships. I live in a township. I'm sorry I'm not a city resident. I'd love to be. But we have no protections for our historic structures. And as a result, we see them disappearing too. This is the opportunity Medina can take the lead. I believe Wadsworth just got their entire village dedicated as a main street, or excuse me, a historic uh, area. But there's many other structures at risk around the entire county. This is your opportunity to shine by showing what can be done. What are reasonable rules? All of us were, most of us were businessmen at one time, or businesswomen. So we know the economic equations as well as the passion for preservation. So all I ask is that use the tools you have set the example, and let's make Medina the, the town I've always loved and I will always love, and I'll do everything in my power to keep it that way. I ask you to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to address council? Good evening, I'm Tom Doyle, the curmudgeon, 326 East Smith. While I may come off sounding like I don't care about the history, I do. I absolutely do. But what I do not like, and I don't, it's the one avenue that has me a little concern, is the fact that you want to make it a mandatory type thing. I think instead we should be following in the footsteps of people like Elmer and Kim Zarni, who went out and offered help and convinced people that it was in everyone's best interest. You know, not everybody that is tearing down these buildings is a private citizen. I mean, we can look at the Baptist Temple, we can look at the, uh, we can look next door Okay, these were city projects that the city has torn down. The city has actually been the biggest offender of taking down historic buildings. And we need, and everything does come to a point where they have been let go. And they've been let go because things have changed. I mean, an original building 
uh, you know, and Mr. Raymer is, is like the whipping boy here, but he's not what's causing the problem. He took down uh, Dorsamore and the, what was the other thing Chamber there? of Commerce. I can't remember. But anyway, and everybody was tickled to death because those were insignificant buildings and he put up a couple of really, really nice buildings. Now suddenly he wants to do something else with another facility. Mm, I, don't, I don't think we should be beating him up because it's over 100 years old. It has deteriorated. It wasn't done overnight. But he is a businessman, and he does own that property. He has every right in the world to do what he wants with it. And for us to come to him and say, no, we're, you know, we're not going to let you do that. And that's not right. It does belong to him. We need to give him uh, the opportunity to see what he's going to do. That building, there have been so many laws that have been passed over the last hundred years that make that building difficult to put into a restored position. Um, I've been in that building. I got a tour from it by Mr. Wade himself. Knob and spool electric. And when you've got steps up to a front porch that was the norm back in the day, does not meet ADA code. And what are you going to do? You're going to tear those steps off and you put zigzag ramps up the front of it? Well, I don't think that's exactly going to make it be what everybody thinks it can be. I think we need to use the old carrot and stick routine and convince people because we do, we do have a great amount of people in this town that are so proud of the historic nature of it. But to mandate and say, well, you don't know what the heck you're doing with your own facility and we're going to demand that you do it our way. I don't think that's the right way to go. Sounds like socialism to me, and I'm totally against it. I do believe, and I, and I like Matt and you know, CDC and everybody else, that they come together and they try to not condition the people, but convince them that this is in everybody's best interest. And we don't have to mandate this stuff. I think what we need to do is just a lot of attaboys, pats on the back, everything else, as they did when they turned the whole square around from having you know, signs hanging off of every face of every building and, and you know, street signs and, I mean, it was, it was a disaster when I moved to town. And they were effective at getting people to work together. They weren't trying to fight with them, they weren't trying to argue, and they were sure as heck were not trying to mandate them. They were, and the one nice thing that I think they did, they started with the city property, they took the firehouse and turned it from what was acceptable, but they turned it into a piece of art. And that got people to start thinking that, hey, we can do a better job. We can make this town be what it is. And we have had so many commercials that have been shot on this, you know, on the square because people do like the ambiance of it. And, and I do too. I mean, I put a stupid amount of money into a building that maybe should have been torn down, you know? But I like the history, and it was important to me to, to put it together, but I wasn't mandated. And that's the part that I have an issue with. I think we need to just keep going around, convincing 
and, and not everybody's a commercial place. There are an awful lot of residential places where the people have gotten old. And just because they have no income aside from Social Security, they cannot maintain and keep a home running and looking perfect the way we would love. I mean, there's an old episode of Andy Mayberry where everybody chipped in and helped the one old guy, uh, you know, and painted his house and everything else. Maybe a lot of community activity like that might help. I just, again, my, my thought is mandating is not the way to go. I think we need to just keep cheering each other on and, and working to get together, actually, working together to get everybody to step up. Like I say, the, a lot of these old people, you know, they've got a house and it gets run down because they don't have the money to keep it up. And the next thing they do, they die or they end up in a nursing home. And now, like you say, you have, although it's not really what you would typically consider a, uh, an out of town landlord, but you have their kids or whatever who just want to get rid of it. You know, we want to sell it as quick as we can so we can keep mom in a nursing home. Well, that's fine. But that also has a tendency to uh, just perpetuate the problem of the deterioration. So I think what we need to do is just like I say, a lot more rah-rah, you know, Medina and everything else. I, I really see no, no sense in trying to string this poor guy up by the, uh, you know, by the neck for, for what he wants to do. He wants, he wants to make Medina better. He wants to put a nice building up that meets all the current codes and everything else. And for, for us to, to beat him up the way a lot of people have been, I think is inappropriate. So, thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to address council? Well, I have one email that I received today that I was asked to read uh, into the, on the visitor section here. It is as follows. Medina City Council members, as a member of the Historic Preservation Board, as well as a concerned citizen, I am writing to express my dismay at the recent actions taken concerning 133 North Court Street and possibly 277 South Court Street. Medina proudly has signs stating Historic Medina on I-71, and indeed, we get visitors from all over spending money on our historic square district. As we have lost close to 40 buildings by demolition over 35 years, we are moving further away from being Historic Medina. We need to have a building owners that understand that income they derive from their property is in part because of the nature of our designated historic district. Shame on the building owners who are allowing their buildings to fall into disrepair and then come before our boards and ask for demolition because of bad conditions. We need to have the inspections in the historic district to keep this from continuing happening or Medina will no longer have the appeal it has enjoyed. Newer residents may not be aware of the condition of the uh, square 55 years ago, but Medina was not a destination then. Our growth has been predicted, uh, predicated on the beauty of the area and the beauty is our uptown square area. Few cities or villages in Ohio can boast their beauty any more than Medina, but we are losing that bit by bit. In 20 years, people will say, why did they allow the big home to be torn down? Just to erect an artificial replica of a historic building in its place. Imagine if King Daibo home that the Gows saved had been lost in a wrecking ball. It may not have been financially prudent to invest that much, but those of us who love old buildings see it differently. We see it as saving history and find the return on investment a prideful action. The city needs to heed the appointed Historic Preservation Board's decisions and understand the painful steps that we go through to evaluate all actions that come before our, the board. This is not done arbitrarily. I ask the city council to find a way to save the home at 133 North Court Street and stop piece by piece destruction of historic Medina. Respectfully, Paul Wood at 311 North Jefferson Street, Medina, Ohio. Okay. 
Now we move on to introduction and consideration of ordinances and resolutions. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to suspend the rules requiring three readings on the following ordinances and resolutions. Ordinance 4022, Ordinance 4122, Ordinance 4222, Ordinance 4322, Ordinance 4422, Ordinance 4522, Resolution 4622, Ordinance 4722, Ordinance 4822, Ordinance 4922, Ordinance 5022, Ordinance 5122, and Ordinance 5222. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I'll make a motion to suspend the rules requiring three readings of tonight's ordinances and resolutions. Second. Is there any discussion on the suspension of the rules? Will the clerk please call the roll on the motion to suspend the rules? Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. The motion passes 6-0. Ordinance 4022, an ordinance authorizing the water service connection at 4615 Abbeville, Abbeville Road, located in New York Township. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Piccoli. Thank you, Mr. President. The new owner of uh, 4615 Abbeville Road approached the service office uh, requesting uh, to tie into our water system. He does not have an adequate water source currently at the property um, and understands that it will be a 45% increase with respect to the cost of water. Thank you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Here. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Ordinance 4022 passes 6 0. Ordinance 4122, an ordinance amending ordinance number 20121 passed December 13th, 2021, amendments to the 22, 2022 budget, the 2021 carry forward. Move to approve. Discussion, Mr. Durham. Thank you, Mr. President. This is the unspent appropriations from last year's budget being reappropriated for use this year. Thank you, and, and just to remind everyone, we in the city do something a little differently. At the end of the year, we don't take the money from the department heads that they save, we let them save it, and they use it on different projects throughout the year. This way, it eliminates the ability of government uh, enforcing the department heads to spend money they don't need to spend. So we, it, it's worked well over the years, and we, we enjoy the department heads participation in that. Is there any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Ordinance 4122 passes 6 0. Ordinance 4222, an ordinance authorizing the finance director to pay out unused 2021 vacation time to three City of Medina employees. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. Durham. Thank you, Mr. President. The city code ordinarily requires um, that employees use at least three weeks of vacation in order to be paid out for any unused vacation. Um, we're asking to waive that um, on behalf of these three employees. They were unable to use that vacation due to staffing shortage and COVID and various other issues. Thank you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Ordinance 4222 passes 6 0. Ordinance 4322, an ordinance amending section 3107 of the Salaries and Benefits Code of the City of Medina, Ohio, relative to accepting the revised job description for the Senior Activities Coordinator at the Medina Community Recreation Center. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add it this time. My second includes the emergency clause. Discussion on the emergency clause and the ordinance. Mr. Worley. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. This amendment re removes senior specific language from the job description. So we, we have the ability to hire an activity coordinator for all different demographics, including uh, for our seasonal programming. The emergency clause is, is requested uh, because we'd like to start advertising for assistance with summer programs. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the emergency clause? Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. <coughs> Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Ordinance 4322 passes 6 0. Ordinance 4422, an ordinance amending sections 3102E and 3107 of the Salaries and Benefits Code of the City of Medina, Ohio, relative to the pay rate and job description for the Travel Aid Marketing Coordinator at the Medina Community Recreation Center. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add it this time. Second includes the emergency clause. Discussion on the emergency clause and the ordinance. Mr. Worley. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the marketing coordinator position is currently vacant, uh, so we're taking this opportunity to update the job description. 
uh, to reflect industry-wide changes in digital marketing, social media, as well as the relative job duties uh, due to uh, some experience being required with the necessary design software. Uh, we are also recommending changing the pay, pay code um, to reflect this change. And the emergency clause is requested because we need to begin advertising for the uh, vacant position in order to fulfill our monthly marketing schedules. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the emergency clause or ordinance? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the emergency clause? Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Ordinance 4422 passes 6 0. Ordinance 4522, an orange authorizing the mayor to advertise for competitive bids and award a contract to the successful bidder for job number 1105 South Court Water Tower Painting and Repairs Project. Moved to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Piccoli. Thank you, Mr. President. As stated, this is for the South Court uh, Water Tower for the exterior painting. It'll involve uh, sandblasting as well as some uh, modifications with respect to handrail uh, replacement. Um, water distribution will not be interrupted, and we're hopeful to have this project completed by fall. Thank you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Ordinance 4522 passes 6-0. Resolution 4622, a resolution authorizing the application for grant assistance from the Supreme Court of Ohio for the 2022 technology grant for the Madonna Municipal Court. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Ms. Lestuka. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Nino wasn't confusing me. He wasn't looking at you this yeah, time. Right. Thank you very much. This is just um, authorization authorizing and hopefully receiving a tech grant from the Supreme Court to uh, add a case management, to our case management file, e-filing. Thank you, any further discussion on the resolution? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the resolution? Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Resolution 4622 passes 6-0. Ordinance 4722, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept seven easements necessary for the West Smith Road reconstruction project. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add at this time. Second includes the emergency clause. Discussion on the emergency clause and the ordinance. Mr. Piccoli. Thank you, Mr. President. So this ordinance um, is being requested to complete the construction on West Smith Road between State Road and South Court Street. So the city must acquire several easements and purchase some properties. So this ordinance will accept seven of those. I believe there are 16 in total. Uh, the emergency clause re is requested because of the right-of-way acquisition is a critical milestone in the ODOT project development process. Failure to meet this deadline may delay the project. So in addition, since each of these property owners have signed the easement, uh, Patrick would like to have them uh, paid as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the emergency clause? Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Ordinance 4722 passes 6 0. Ordinance 4822, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept a stormwater operation and maintenance agreement, SWOMA, from Touchstone Properties LLC for a newly installed stormwater detention system. Moved to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Piccoli. Thank you, Mr. President. This agreement is required by the Ohio EPA for newly developed properties that have stormwater retention facilities. This agreement outlines the property owner's annual operational plan and maintenance responsibilities. Uh, the agreement will also ensure that the detention system operates as designed throughout the life of the development. Um, this agreement is for a rock crushing yard on Progress Drive. Thank you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shield. Yes. Ordinance 4822 passes 6 0. Ordinance 4922, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept a stormwater operations and maintenance agreement, SWOMA, for Chick fil A uh, for a newly formed installed stormwater detention system. 
Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Piccoli. Thank you, Mr. President. So as stated, this agreement is for the new Chick-fil-A on North Court Street, and the explanation um, is the same as the previous ordinance, 4822, with respect to the agreement with the uh, Ohio EPA for newly developed properties that have detention, Thank retention, you. sorry. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Ordinance 4922 passes 6 0. Ordinance 5022, an ordinance amending ordinance number 12717 passed September 11th, 2017, pertaining to the pavilion rental fees for the Parks and Recreation Department. Moved to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. Worley. Thank you, Mr. President. This request is to amend our rental time blocks from four hours to three hours in an effort to provide greater opportunity for residents and non residents to enjoy the facilities we're working towards implementing online booking that is going to utilize uh, predetermined time, bo time blocks of three hours thank you thank you any further discussion will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance hazel time yes lamb yes rose yes shields yes coin yes hair yes ordinance 50 22 passes 60 ordinance 51 22 an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a right-of-way purchase agreement with jmj holdings corp an Ohio Corporation for the purpose of completing the West Smith reconstruction project. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I'm at it this time. A second includes the emergency clause. Discussion of the emergency clause and the ordinance. Mr. Piccoli. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, in order to complete the construction of the West Smith Road uh, project between uh, State Road and South Court Street. The city must acquire several uh, easements and purchase some properties. This ordinance will authorize the purchase agreement for one of those properties. Um, again, the uh, emergency clause is requested similar to the previous ordinance um, because the right-of-way acquisition is a critical milestone in the ODOT developmental process. Um, failure to meet the deadline could cause delays, and uh, Patrick would like to pay them as soon as possible. Thank you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on adoption of the emergency clause? Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Ordinance 5122 passes 6 0. And finally, Ordinance 5222, an ordinance amending Ordinance Number 20121, passed December 13th, 2021, budget amendments to the 2022 budget. Moved to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Durham. Thank you, Mr. President. As, as discussed at the finance meeting earlier tonight, this is uh, a wellness funds received, which need to be appropriated to be spent, and then uh, additional testing beyond what was budgeted for for the Civil Service Department. Thank you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Shields. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Ordinance 5222 passes. Six zero. Count, council comments. <coughs> sure. Ms. Hazeltine. Thank you, Mr. President. In the absence of Councilman Simpson, I will just say please be kind. That goes for all of you <laughs> and anybody at home. Um, I don't have much to say this week, believe it or not, but I hope everyone has a great St. Patrick's Day on Thursday and stay safe. Thank you. Any other council comments? Mr. President. Mr. Rose. I just want to, one quick uh, prayers to the Ukrainian people. Uh, may they get this, may this stop really quick. Thank you. Thank you. Additional council comments, Mr. Lamb. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, First of all, I appreciate everybody that's, that spoke tonight on this issue. I am, uh, I share with, I think with most of you, you, I think you understand that I share your, your commitment, your passion to the community. Um, I want to add to that, though, that um, this administration and this city council, as I think I've spoken to some of you before, I, I have every conversation or concern I have ever had with members of the administration or city council, I have uh, always, has always been cooperative, understanding, and my sense of working with this administration is, has been, is and has been that um, you could almost, can almost think that the, everybody here had taken a master class in being a good listener and um, taking into account opinions that they may or may not agree with. And that's a hard thing. I will tell you what, that's a hard thing to find 
but that is an admirable quality, uh, rare as it often, unfortunately, it unfortunately is. Um, my my um, involvement in the restoration and the preservation of the downtown goes back quite a long way. It actually goes back before I was here because my wife was the was one of a few people that organized to save the old courthouse. And saving the old courthouse then formed the, the community design committee, which spearheaded um, what Mr. Doyle talked about was the um, restoration and renovation of, of, of the downtown, which was also an admirable thing and an unheard of thing because it was done entirely with private funds, except for the expense of the red paint on the firehouse which was donated by the city of Medina uh, through the goodwill of uh, Mayor Fred Greenwood. My, my sense was that in the 1980s, it was important that we protect what we had accomplished because we weren't always dealing with folks that had the same spirit and heart and commitment to the restoration. And so when the, when the legislation was crafted for the preservation board, it was done with care so that it wasn't overburdensome but it was a way to ensure that the, the, the general guidelines of what you would expect an historic district to follow um, could, could be enforced. And always, hopefully, people would do it. They would do that on their own, and there wouldn't have to be the heavy hand, uh, there wouldn't have to be the heavy hand uh, of, of enforcement. But I want, I want everyone to understand that the administration works hard, city council works hard um, to make things right. And um, sometimes they don't work. Sometimes things just don't work. And this one, you know, as we have talked about, this one went through boards and commissions and, and came up with a result that, that, in my opinion, for me anyway, that's the saddest thing I've heard since I've been here, and I've been here a while. And I wish it wasn't so. But I also know that wishing something isn't so doesn't change much. And so it is important that we continue to have these kinds of discussions, help to educate people, educate the community about what we had, what we fixed, how we got here, and to elevate that discussion about the importance of preservation of, this very, of, our, very small, of our very small district. When you take away a building, you do take away the entire history. And when you do take away a building that is historic, could have been maintained, can still be maintained, and you construct another building that's nice, and yep, it's up to code, you are creating, that is Disney. We are creating a, a Disney-esque neighborhood. And that is not within the guidelines generally acceptable in any historic district. Without tearing the building down, you can make buildings conform architecturally, but not, not imitate um, the, the buildings that are historic. So I think what we need to do and continue to work on is what we're doing now. Main Street, the CDC, uh, the Historical Society, they have a rough draft of, a, of information and a brochure so that every, every business owner, every property owner in the district, um, contractors, realtors, all know the regulations and the rules that are, currently, that are currently in place so that things won't happen. Like recently, the unfortunate um, one, one, um, one individual who bought a building in this district didn't really realize he was in the district because he didn't know, and it's a surprise to be here. So it's very important that we educate folks about our history, but about the rules and the regulations and things so they know what to expect when they buy a building in the district, and then we can work with them and work, um, work together. Because working together is, is one of the very best things we've done. It's, it's really how we got here. And it is an important thing to keep in mind. And when it doesn't work, then you end up with boards and commissions, and you end up, you end up with with the appeals. The law director and I worked for, for over a couple of years, I think, because of COVID, to strengthen the demolition language in the, in the Historic Preservation Board legislation. And so that it was clear and it was more fair, not only for the, the not only better language so that we could deal with the demolition in, in, a, in a legal and, and, and um, with more guidance, but also so that it was fair to the person who was wanted to demolish something so that we could create, create a balance. And this time, it, it, it hasn't worked out. But by working together as a community, hopefully the next, the next one, the next building that comes up, will be dealt with and, and handled, and it will be handled in a different way. 
So I appreciate all your comments, and, and Tom in particular, because what you talked about the CDC when it was formed, that is how it was done. It was all done one building at a time by, with property owners, business people, with, and with that great cooperation. And now we're a little bit beyond all of just cooperation, and I want to make sure that we do ensure that we protect the nine blocks that we have worked so hard, we have worked so hard to create. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments or discussion? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned.